In this chapter, we're going to focus on stock market and valuation of individual stocks. So as we remember from prior uh, materials that the value of any investment is the present value of future cash flows. So in order for us to value stocks, we have to find out what kind of cash flows is associated with buying a stock and also uh, what discount rate we should use when finding the present value. So when you buy a stock, you can get your money back in one of two ways. One is through dividends, and the other is if you end up selling your stock, you can get the price. So similar to bond valuation, um, the price of a stock and any other investment is the present value of future cash flow. So to illustrate this, let's first take a look at an example. In this example, we purchase one stock. So let's say we purchase the stock of more ink or more oil ink, and you know that you expect it to pay a $2 dividend in one year, and then you believe you sell it at the end of the year. So we know that the price of the stock or the value of the stock you're gonna pay is the present value of expected future cash flow. So if you draw the timeline for this problem is relatively straightforward, this is only one year. So, and at the end of the year, you're gonna get $2 in dividend plus $14 in from selling the stock. So you get a total of $16. You know that the required return is 20%. So our discount rate is 20%. The $16 is money you'll get at the end of year one. So the $16 is your future value. And you can find the present value either using the formula or using your calculator. And the time period is just one year. So this is a relatively straightforward um, calculation. So the interest rate is 20%. It's so simple, we can, we can go ahead and use the formula to find the present value. So we discount the $16 back at 20% for one year, and we can find out what the uh, value of the stock is. So this uh, demonstration show you both ways, either to use the formula or use the financial calculator. So the important thing is that the price of the stock or the value of the stock is in today, so this is the price today, year zero, is $13.33. Now let's take a look at the same company, but let's say instead of holding the stock for just one year, we're gonna hold the stock for two years. So in this case, we assume that we'll buy the stock and the, we'll also get the $1 dividend, I'm sorry, $2 dividend in one year. However, you, you're going to hold on to the stock for two years. So if you look at the timeline for this investment, so the investment horizon is longer. The investment horizon is two years. And in year one, you'll get $2 in dividend. And in year two, you'll get $2.10 in dividend plus $14.70 in selling from selling the stock. So in year two, you have $16.80 altogether. Uh, this, we assume that the discount rate did not change. This is the same problems. Remember, you are working with the same stock. So from the last problem, we know that the required return for this stock is 20%. To find the price that you're willing to pay today, we are still finding the present value. So the present value of this, this uh, problem is a little bit more complicated, but again, it's things that we have seen before. So this is a multi-year problem, or uh, multi-cash flow problem with cash flow in year one and cash flow in year two. So we'll, we'll, we can solve this using, again, either the calculator or your um, or the formula. Uh, if you're using the calculator, um, it's important to keep in mind that there's no cash flow in year zero. So even though we don't have a cash flow, we want to make sure that we, we put in a zero to remind us that there's no cash flow occurring in year zero. So to find the present value of multiple cash flow, we use the cash flow register. And we want to clear 
all the work first. So as we just noted, we have no cash flow in year zero. So we just go down to cash flow one in year one, and that is $2. And we get that once. Cash flow in year two, and this is important. Cash flow in year two is sixteen dollars and eighty cents. This is very important, even though you get two types of ca two cash flows in year two, dividend and price. We enter the sum, we enter the total in year two, so we get one amount of cash flow, which is sixteen dollars and eighty cents in year two, and that's all we have. So we can go to MPV. Our interest rate is twenty percent, so. We put in 20, we scroll down, down arrow to MPV, press compute, and that is the present value of this cash flow. You notice that is also $13.33. So as you notice, this model obviously is created using a special assumptions, but you saw that the basic idea of valuing a stock is to estimate all future cash flow. So let's see, let's take this specific example and try and generalize it into an, an approach that we can use to estimate the value of any stock. Uh, one of the challenge of developing such a generalized model is that when we we know how to value a stock, if we hold on to it for one year, for two years, obviously you can keep doing it for three years, four years, five years, ten years. However, um, uh, the same approach applies. So you eventually you will find that the price of the stock is the present value of all expected future uh, dividends. Um, so the challenge then will become, because as the investment horizon gets longer and longer, uh, as you saw in bond valuation, the value of the future price becomes much less important relative to the dividend or the income component of the investment. However, how do we go about forecasting all future dividend? And the reason why estimating all future dividend is such a challenge is that one of the important characteristics of investing in stock is that uh, there's no end date. A company could, in theory, last forever. Um, there are some companies even, uh, even um, around us today, such as Coca-Cola, that has paid dividend consistently for uh, many, many years. And um, there's really no reason for us to estimate that Coca-Cola will not be around for another 50, 100 years. So how can we estimate all these future dividends? Um, and the answer is, we need to make some simplifying assumptions. So um, in the next video, we're going to go over a few specific or special cases of the assumptions that we make that enable us to evaluate the value of a stock.